Hello everybody and welcome to another lesson of your PTE. Today we will be covering PTE reading and in this lesson I will be discussing with you the different types of question types and PTE reading and how to approach it and we will also be discussing on uh, the different types of grammar and the tools that you would require to make your PTE uh, reading easier for you. So the main difference between PTE reading and other types of question for PTE is PTE re reading does not have any shortcuts or any strategies or templates that you could use to attempt this question type. So it requires you to actually use your knowledge of English. And um, so PTE does not also have you know, a time allocated for each question type. You're just given a chunk of time and you're given uh, a heap of tasks and you're supposed to uh, complete your tasks in the given time. So there's a high possibility that you as a test taker or several students lose track of time. So I will also discuss with you as to how many minutes that you have to allot for each question type so that you do not get lost on the way and uh, PT reading is uh, completed on time. Uh, PT reading is your third module uh, that you will be attempting. So it's the third test or it's the third module that you will be attempting. So you'll first start off your PT with speaking, followed by writing and then and then your reading. So like I told you before, PT reading is for a total of about 34 or 35 minutes to 42 to 44 minutes long. And these are the different types of um, reading question types. Let me share my screen with you. So PT reading, these are the different types of question types that you will come across in your um, test. So you'll be encountering all the five types of question. You will start off with reading and writing, fill in the blanks, uh, which uh, as the name suggests, give you points, gives you points to reading as well as towards your writing. So there's equal transferable of uh, points per blank towards your reading and towards your writing module. It provides a big support or it's a big contributor towards your writing module as well. So please pay attention to this question type. It's one of your most important question types in your reading as well as in your entire PT test. So there is no allotment of time, like I told you you will be um, uh, utilizing your time by yourself. So see that you use your judgment. Do not dwell on one, diff one type of question or do not dwell on one blank or one question for a long time because you've got five questions to cover. And there's something called partial credit here, which I will explain in detail, but uh, I'll just give you an idea about what I mean by partial credit. Suppose so what happens in this type of a question type? You're given a reading passage or a reading passage is given to you with blanks in the passage. And you're supposed to fill in the right answer for each of those blanks from the option given below. Let me repeat that again. So reading passage is given to you and there are blanks in the reading passage containing options. So you'll have to choose from the options for each blank. So each blank contains options. You'll have to choose from the four options and answer the right question. So partial credit means if in the reading passage you have five different blanks and you're able to answer two um, blanks right correctly and if you're unable to answer the remainder of three blanks you will still be getting two points so every blank carries a point so even if you answer one blank correctly you'll still be getting one point towards your reading so that's what i mean by partial credit uh, so every blank carries a point to reading and a point to writing. And there's no negative marking for this question type. And like it says, you get points for your reading as well as your writing. It's a very important question type. You'll have about five to six of these types of question. And for every question, I suggest that you spend at least three minutes each. You can, you can afford to spend three to three and a half minutes per question. Your context is important. Your grammar and your vocabulary is important. The second question type that you will come across in this module or in, in your reading is your multiple choice, multiple answer questions. So if you've uh, taken any other 
English proficiency test, you should be familiar with this question. So what happens in PTE, multiple choice, multiple answer for your reading module is, you're always given a reading uh, passage because it's your reading module, your question appears in the form of a reading passage. So a reading passage is given to you and a question will be asked based on that passage. A passage is given, you'll be asked a question based on that passage and there are options given to you from, to choose from. So as the name suggests, it says there are multiple choices and there are multiple answer. That means there's more than one correct answer. So every time you choose a right answer, you get a point towards your reading. So there's no transferable for this question type. That means it gives you points to reading, but that's all. It doesn't give you points anywhere else. There's a catch. There are, there's negative marking for this question type. So please take note, this question type, multiple choice, multiple answer, has negative marking. So if you choose an option which is incorrect or you choose a wrong option, you end up getting negative one or minus one. So be very careful. Choose one answer which you are very sure is the right answer. The third question type over here is called reorder paragraph. It's a very important question type. So this question type, um, what, what happens here? You're given sentences from a passage. So you're given sentences from a passage, which is sentence one, two, three, four, which is portrayed or displayed on the left-hand side of your screen. And these sentences are numbered, either they're numbered as A, B, C, or one, two, three. So you have sentences from a reading passage which is given to you or which is displayed on the left side. And these sentences are displayed in the wrong order or they are mixed up. They're not displayed in the right order. Your job is to arrange them on your right. So you'll have to drag those sentences and arrange them to your right in the right order. That's your task and that's what you're supposed to do. Now, uh, how you marked, I will be explaining the marking criteria for your reorder paragraph in detail. So you're marked for every pair that you make correctly. I will explain what I mean by that as we move forward. The third question type or the fourth question type in this uh, module is your reading fill in the blanks. So you encountered reading and writing fill in the blanks, which I spoke to you about. And there's another type of fill in the blanks, which is only called reading fill in the blanks. So the reason why it's called reading fill in the blanks is it does not transfer points to any other module, but it's very important towards your reading module. So every question type other than your reading and writing fill in the blanks do not give you points to any other module, but your reading and writing fill in the blanks, that's the first question type, gives you points towards your writing. So what happens in your reading fill in the blanks? Your question here in your reading is always in the form of a, a reading passage. So for your reading module, your question is always a reading passage. So you're given a reading passage with blanks and you're supposed to fill in those blanks. So you're given a reading passage which blanks and you're given options to those blanks right below. So below that passage, the options are displayed in, a, in, in a, you know, the options are displayed and the options that are displayed are double the number of blanks. If there are four blanks, the, the options are about eight uh, options. You'll have to drag the option and drop it to the right blank. So I will uh, show you, or I will dis discuss more about it as we solve a few of these uh, types of question. I hope uh, this was understandable to you. So uh, we will be discussing each of these questions one by one. So I'll be discussing each of these questions one by one. Let me share my screen once again. Okay, so to get your points towards reading, it's not just reading that gives you points towards reading. Reading is also supported from other modules. So how do you, how else do you get points towards your reading? So you get points for your reading from your read aloud question type, which belongs to speaking. So this question type, which is a part of your speaking module can transfer about 30 to 34 points towards your reading. So you get about 30, 34 points from your read aloud towards your reading. So this is a very big priority or it's a very big uh, question type. It's a very important question type uh, to get points towards your reading. And then your, from your writing question type, you get points from this summarized written text. So 
Now your writing question type summarized written text gives you about four to six points towards your reading. And uh, from your listening module, there are two question type that transfers points towards your reading. So highlight correct summary transfers about two to three points towards your reading. Highlight incorrect words can transfer about 10 points at least or 10 to 15 points towards your reading. So many students find it difficult to attempt reading question type because it requires your English usage itself more than your strategies and techniques. So try and get the help of all these question types to get your maximum points or to get your desired score in your reading module. Now, this is how we will discuss multiple choice single answer question type to begin with. So this is how your question type is going to look like. So there is a reading option or there's a reading passage that is displayed and there is a question asked based on this passage and then you're given options and you're supposed to choose the right answer to this question. So the, uh, the approach that I will tell you is or the approach how you can do this is first thing you do is read the question first. One present indicator of climate change in Australia is and then try to think of the synonym for your keyword. So what is the keyword? Uh, what are your keywords? One present, so a single present indicator, a current sig uh, signal or a current um, trend or a current um, indicator of climate change, weather change, change in weather uh, in Australia is, and you have all these options. So let's go looking for this uh, sentence in the passage. So skim through your passage, trying to locate this sentence. So we found out something about climate change. So there's this only one question that's talking to you about climate change. Now, if you go through it, if you, if you look through it, so what does it say? What's the present indicator? So uh, some expects war and focused a long-standing, so I'm sorry. So a long-standing drought and serious water shortages. So there is drought in your option. So drought is an indicator or it is signaling uh, about, uh, it is signaling the climate change or in Australia. So drought is one of the signals or drought is one of the um, trends or drought is one of the occurrences that symbolize or that signal this climate change in Australia. So you choose the word drought. So spend about a minute and a half for these questions because your passages are not too big. Okay, so let's look at a few multiple choice single answers. I'll stop sharing the screen I'll open up a practice websites from where you can we can practice a few of multiple choice single answers together. And before I continue, each time you choose the right answer, you get a point towards reading. So that's one point for every right answer that you choose. And remember, there's no negative marking for this question type. So uh, the website that I'm going to use is called Real PTE. Uh, let me um, pull it up and I'll start sharing my screen with you. So this is the website that I'm going to use today. It's called realpte.com. If you're new to this website, this is a free website. You can access it online and use it for your daily practice. So to access your reading module, this is how your page is going to look like when you first log in. So you'll have to make a profile in this website. So you choose your reading question, you choose the option reading, and then you choose multiple choice single answer, which we're going to practice now. And then we start practicing it. Remember to choose the second option, which is called complete question, so that you get all your questions and you get them completely. 
So if you look at the first question, I hope you can see my screen. If you look at the first question, this is how it's going to look like. So you look at the uh, question statement first. That's your first job. So step one, look at your question statement or approach one. Look at your question statement and try to paraphrase it or you try to uh, uh, talk about it in your own words. You try to understand it in your own words. What is the main issue which is concerning the writer? So what are your keywords here? Main issue concerning the writer. Main issue. So it could be the main concern, main problem, or main concern, or the prior, uh, prior uh, concern which is a priority or a primary concern. All this could be um, the synonym for main issue, which is concerning the writer, or which is troubling the writer, which the writer is concerned about, or which um, holds the writer's thoughts. All this could be your, so what are you understanding? What's this question asking you? What is the primary concern which is which the writer has in this passage. So we go, don't read your options, we go looking for it now. And trying to understand what's the prime where this is located. So for these types of question, right? So where it's asking you what the passage is telling or what's the main issue or and things like that. Usually the answer is located either in the first sentence or in the last sentence of the reading passage. The reason is because the author might elaborate, might, might introduce the topic to you or to the reader and might elaborate on it, or, or he might elaborate about the topic first and then narrow it down in the end. So the answer to such questions where they're asking what the passage is talking about or what's the summary of that passage, usually the answer is found in the first statement or in the last. So even though you're skimming through the passage, skim through the passage uh, quickly, but pay attention or read carefully your first sentence and your last sentence. So let's take time to skim through. Okay, so how different would Aristotle, so uh, let's look at our answers. The reason behind Aristotle's philosophy, there is nothing, uh, no reason that's mentioned here. The way in which writers distort reality, there's no distortion of reality mentioned here. Then the extent to which languages uh, influence thought. Yes, so there is a difference uh, in how, I mean, there is a mention about how the languages are, um, uh, influencing thoughts. So it's asking a language acting as a pair of glasses with tinted lenses. And it's also talking that lang does language predispose us to a, uh, to a particular line of thinking. And then uh, in the last line is significantly asking if Aristotle's logic would have been different or if, whether it would vary if he had spoken Mandarin or Hopi. So what the, what's the primary issue which is concerning? So he's asking about the extent to which language influences thoughts. Or in other words, if a person is expressing himself, so now I'm talking English, if I tend to talk Mandarin or a different language, would that or would my thoughts vary? That's what is the primary issue which is concerning the writer. Let's look at our answer. So you can check your answer when you click on it. You check your answer and if your answer is right or the right answer will be highlighted in green. So that's our answer and we found it right here. So we found the main gist of it in the last sentence like I was telling you. The answer is to such type of questions is either located in the beginning of the passage or in the end. Can we do another question of this? So if you're looking at the next type of question, give me a minute while I look if there are others joining us. Okay, so if you look at the other question, uh, the next question, let's read the sentence, uh, the question sentence or the question statement first. This information suggests that the key way in which the concept of fear of crime has changed is that. So this information is talking about this passage, the information that is given suggests, what's the paraphrased word for suggestion, or how, what's the synonym for suggestion? 
this information suggests, this information explains, this information gives an idea that the key way or the main way, main concept in which the concept of fear or the idea of fear of crime has changed is. This information suggests that the primary way or the primary uh, thinking in which the primary method in which the concept of fear of crime has changed is that. Now, uh, let's start reading. So what is this information suggesting? It come as a surprise to many that concept of fear of crime is a recent invention. However, prior to the mid 1960s, the term was never used and certainly not in, in the years we use it today. Uh, However, fear of crime is more simply a term to Okay, so what is the answer? So it says that it is now regarded as a measurable phenomenon. So look at it, it tells us that uh, it is seen now as a quantifiable measurable social scientific. So it's quantifiable, that means it's a quantity which is measurable phenomenon which can be addressed through government policies. Let's look at our answer. That is indeed our answer. So we skim through paying attention. Um, most We skim through the passage and we pay uh, extra attention to the first and the last statement of the passage. Let's read the next one or let's attempt another question. So this is the third question. So it's again asking about what is the main idea about this essay or about this information. So like I told you, when it's asking about a summary or the main idea, the main concept, usually, usually the answer is found either in the first line or in the last line of the passage. So let's start skimming through the passage, paying uh, extra attention to the first and the last statement of the passage. Many argue that art cannot be defined. We could go about this in several ways. Art is often considered as the process or product of deliberately arranging elements in a way that appeals to the senses or emotions. It encompasses a diverse range of human activities, activities, creations, and ways of expression, including music, literature, film, sculpture, and paintings. The meaning of art is explored in a branch of philosophy known as aesthetics. At least that's what Wikipedia claims. Now let's look at the option. Art is a difficult and complex form to explain. Uh, many argue that art cannot be defined then. Wikipedia defines art under aesthetics, which is a branch of philosophy, uh, diverse range uh, process of, in a way that appeals to senses or emotions. So uh, that's aesthetically pleasing. That's what it means which is appealing or which pleases um, people aesthetically, pleases or appeases their senses or emotions, then uh, this cannot be the answer. Art is directed in a way that it deliberately appeals to the emotions of people. Yes, art is directly appealing to a, um, to, a, um, a to the emotions of people. So if you look at it, I'm sorry, let me, let me share my screen once again. So if you look at it once again, I think of all your options, the first option is, um, the first option is the most um, easy to uh, understand. So I think that could be our answer. That indeed is our answer. Hello, Ravi. Welcome to today's lesson. Are you new to uh, this lesson? Are you new here? Ravi? We're just discussing uh, PTE reading uh, and um, resolving multiple choice questions. So this lesson will be posted on YouTube for the portions that you've missed will be posted on YouTube. So you can take a look at it to understand your reading question types. Have you taken your PTE before? A 
Okay, uh, so um, so we're just discussing the ty different types of question types for PTE. And today we are discussing reading question types in detail and uh, how to answer them. But what are the approaches to reading questions? So the websites that you can use to practice your PT questions, these are free websites found all over the internet. So this website that I'm using today is called realpte.com. You can use it, you should make a profile and uh, you can use it to practice. You can also use other websites like a uni.com, um, toppte.com. I'm typing it on the chat board for you to understand. Sorry, top.com. Oh, it's correcting itself. Dot com, PT tools. Dot com. So use these websites to practice your questions. Uh, last week we discussed speaking questions in detail and what are the strategies and what are the templates you could use for speaking. And today we're discussing reading question types. We are discussing the first question type of reading, which is called multiple choice, single answer. So um, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, I'll just uh, show you what we just did. So these are the five different types of reading question types. So in this module or for your reading test, uh, you will be attempting it in the, you know, it's the third module that you'll be attempting. So of, if you'll be first starting your, uh, you'll be first starting your, your uh, PTE with your speaking, then your writing. And this is the third test that you'll be attempting. So you'll be attempting your re, uh, reading as your third module, or it's, your, it's going to be your third test. So the difference between PT reading and other modules of PTE is in other modules of PTE, you're given time or time is allotted for each question type. Whereas for your reading questions, you're just given a chunk of time and you're given a few tasks. You have to complete those tasks, tasks in the given time. So each question is not allotted uh, a special amount of time. So it's very easy for students to get lost here or to lose track of time. So as I explain each question type, I will also tell you uh, how many minutes or uh, how much time to allot for each of these questions. Am I being clear to you, Ravi? Um, Okay, you've chatted, yes, okay. If there's anything that you don't understand, please let me know. See, these are the five types of question. Your total reading is for about 32 to 41 minutes. And uh, we are just discussing multiple choice, single answer question. So this is not the most important question type in PTE. It's one of the question type, do not pay a lot of attention to it. So I'm just discussing this. This is the first question that you will come across in your test. So when you begin your reading, multiple choice single answer is the first question type that you will come across. So I'll just share my screen with you and I'll tell you uh, how, how we were solving this question type. Are you in a position to talk or no? Okay, that's all right. So uh, let's start off with the next question. So the, the, the way or the approach, there are many approaches to attempt each of these questions, but the approach that I suggest that you use is first read the sentence, the question statement first, try to understand it or paraphrase it, try to understand the meaning of this in your own words, then go looking for it find the location and then compare it with the, um, with the options. So find the difference in the options and then compare it. So read your uh, question statement first, try to understand what they're asking for, try to locate it in this passage, try to locate it in this uh, reading passage and then try to understand where it is um, uh, and try to understand what option to use. 
So we have another student who has joined us. Oh, he's just gone. Okay. So if you read this according to the text, how do children usually understand advertising? So according to the text that is given, how do children usually understand advertising? Or how do children, people usually understand uh, advertising? So what, how do children understand the meaning of advertising or something like that? So then we go back uh, to the passage. So it says from a child's point of view, what is the purpose of advertising? So the answer to this question type, to such type of questions is usually located either in the first sentence or in the last sentence. So usually, so there is a chance that it won't be located there as well. So while you're skimming through the passage after understanding this question, while you're skimming through the passage, see that you pay extra attention to the first statement and the last statement because there's a high chance that your uh, answer is located there. Are we good so far? So if you look at it uh, from a child's point of view, what is the purpose of, so you're skimming through the passage, is advertising on TV done to give actors an opportunity to take a rest or practice their lines? Or is it done to make people buy things? Is the main difference between programs and commercials that commercials are for real where programs are not? Uh, or that programs are for kids and commercials for adults? As has been shown several times in the literature, uh, some children are able to distinguish between programs and commercials and are aware of the intent of TV advertising, whereas others are not. So we skim through the passage, we give extra attention to the first sentence and the last sentence. Now we read through the options. What's according to the text, children cannot distinguish between programs and commercials at all. At all is our distractor. So it doesn't say at all. It says some children are able to. So this cannot be our answer. Advertising is done so that actors can take a rest and practice their lines. So is it, so they're just asking a question, is advertising done to give the actors a rest? So it's also, it's not our answer. Then the third one, programs are for children while commercials are for adults. Again, they're asking a question, are the programs for children while the commercial are for adults? But the last statement would say, some children can distinguish between programs and commercials while others cannot. So you see, this could be our answer. So we spent about three minutes along with me explaining and reading. So when you're attempting it in your exam, the maximum time that you ought to spend or you can afford to spend for this type of question is about, uh, I suggest, a minute and a half, nothing more than that. So please don't get um, caught in the, in, the, in the frantic searching for your answer, but rather when you're looking at it, try to stick to one answer or if, you, if you're confused, choose the third option, okay? So in your exam, for this question type, if you're getting con con if you're confused and if you're not sure what the answer is, choose the third option, okay? So if you can get the answer in a minute, inside a minute or a minute and a half, good, well and good for you. But if you can't, don't dwell on it, don't keep looking for it, but choose the third option, please, and move on. Is there any doubts? Let me know in the chat because you can't speak. If you know, if you've got any doubts, if you wish to ask anything, please let me know and I'll uh, read it and I'll answer, you, answer your question. Is everything okay so far? So like, like I told you uh, before, any reason to choose the third option? The reason is there's a high probability. So based on the probability, in your PTE, for your multiple choice questions, the third option is usually the answer. So most of the time, your third option is the answer. There's a high probability that the, that the answer to your question is set to be the third option. So it's, it'll be set to be the third. Your answer is always set to be in the third position or in the third option. Not always, but most of the time, about a lot of times, most of the time. So if you get stuck, do not waste your time for a long time. In a minute and a half, if you're able to locate your answer, good for you. If you can't, if you're finding it difficult, then do not think twice, choose the third option, okay? So like I told you before, to such ki kinds of question where they're asking, what's the summary? Or what is the speaker trying to say? What is the author trying to tell you? So usually the answer is located either in the first sentence or in the last sentence, okay? The reason why the answer is either located in the first sentence or last sentence is, 
because the author when he's writing a passage he either introduces the topic here right here in the beginning and then he elaborates it or he elaborates the topic or he talks about everything else and then finally narrows down or arrives at the topic in the end okay so he gives his main idea either in the beginning and he elaborates it or he arrives at his idea right in the end so that's why there's a big chance that to such questions where they're asking the gist of the passage or what the author is trying to tell you the answer will be located in the, either in the first sentence or in the last sentence okay so skim through the passage without skipping anything but pay extra attention to the first sentence and the last sentence any doubts uh Ravi, before we continue i just want to know what's your desired score what score are you looking at about seven that's 66 plus and uh, if you've got about four weeks this is a doable score you can easily get it so attend classes regularly we have our classes from 11 to 1 i'll be sharing templates and shortcuts and keys to um, you know cracking your pt smashing it getting your seven uh, h easily so we have classes for pt from 11 to 1 and if you're looking at ielts classes we have classes from uh, two to four Okay, let's look at the next type of question or the next question type. So I'm sorry, next question. So we'll solve one more of this question and then we go on to the uh, other type of, uh, the other types of question in our reading, okay? So if you look at this, so what is Professor Phoenix's option, opinion about a good teaching approach? So what is this guy's opinion or Professor Phoenix's opinion about a good teaching approach? Now try to understand the question. What is his opinion? What is his idea? What is his concept uh, about a good teaching approach or about a good method of teaching or about a good way of teaching or something like that. So we understand the question. Now try to go locate it in your passage. Can you give it a try Ravi? And then we'll discuss it together. Okay, you solve it and I'll solve it through too. So while you're skimming through the passage, pay extra attention to the first and the last sentence. Okay. Let's give it a try. Okay, do you locate the answer? Ravi, did you, uh, can you uh, attempt it or did you locate an answer? No. Okay, so if you look at it, how to, how to arrive at the answer. Uh, so the teaching approach from his undergraduate days is already a good one. So what does he say in here? Uh, he says students, uh, so he says attraction will be a teaching approach that differs significantly. So from his days as an undergraduate. So if it was a good teaching method in his undergraduate days, 
he wouldn't say it's um, it should differ. So this is not our option. So we eliminate this option. A good teaching approach should be based on real life issues, which is more attractive to students. So he says real life issues should be the starting point. This could be our answer. Let's look at the next one. To better understand the basis of chemistry, the, the children should be taught the core chemistry in the same way over and over again. So out of this study, he says students will be exposed to the same core chemistry unchanged over decades. So he's not here they're talking about a method, about the way, in the same way over and over again. No, so this cannot be our answer. Traditional lectures and modules should be abandoned completely. Does he say that? There's nothing like that. So the option here looks to be this one, the, the second option here, and that is our answer. So while you're practicing or while you're taking mock tests, when you're using your practice websites, the answer need not be the third option. It need not be the third option, but in your exam uh, or in your real exam in your, when you're taking your PTE, there's a big chance, there's a high probability for your answer to be the third option, okay? So if you get stuck, don't waste your time, simply choose the third option. So we'll go to the next question. So I'm stopping my share here. I'll share my PowerPoint with you and then we go to the next question type, okay? So, uh, okay, and this is another thing, I've explained this uh, earlier in my lesson, but you should also understand in PTE, there's something called transferable scores. Have you heard of it? Have you heard of score transferables? I've explained this in my other lesson and earlier today as well. Okay, so this is how good, so you understand the concept. So this is how you get your reading points from other modules. So you, I know reading is kind of difficult for a lot of students. PT reading is a difficult question type for many students. But this is how you can get your reading points from other modules. So from your speaking, this question type called read aloud can transfer about 30, 34 points towards your reading. So this should be your first priority. This should be a big priority for you to try and get as many points as you can from read aloud from your speaking. And the, from writing, this question type summarize written text can give you about four to six points towards your reading. And thirdly, from your listening module, highlight correct summary, which is again a multiple choice question, gives you about two to three points towards your reading. And highlight incorrect words uh, from your listening also gives you about 10 to 15 points towards your reading. So to get your 66 plus in your reading, you should give importance to these question types as well. Take a screenshot if you want to, if you're already aware of it, then um, good. Can we move on? Okay. So were you aware of this already, Ravi, about uh, these questions transferring uh, all these points? You were aware of it already? Okay, you had heard it from your friend. All right. So um, then we go to the next question type. This is the second MCQ or the second multiple choice question in your reading module, which is called multiple choice, multiple answer. So multiple choice, multiple answer means what? All of the answers given, there is more than one correct answer. So multiple answer means what? There's more than one correct answer. So each time you choose the right answer, you get a point. So if there are two correct answers, you get two points towards reading. If there are three correct answers, you get three points towards reading when you choose it. But there's a catch for this question type, there's negative marking. So if you choose the right answer, you get plus one. But if you choose the wrong answer, then you get negative one. So be very careful with this question type. Unless you're very sure about your uh, answer, please don't choose it because you tend to get negative marking here. So far, are we all clear? 
If you've got a doubt, uh, type it in your chat and I'll answer it. But if you're okay, then we'll move forward, okay? We use the same, same kind of logic that we used for your multiple choice single answer, the same logic here. But here, be very, very careful. Unless you're 100% sure, do not choose. See, you don't get anything, but at least you're not losing anything. But if you choose an answer to just take a chance, and if it's wrong, then negative one, uh, uh, that's negative one. So negative marking. So be very careful with this. The same thing, same way that we answer this. So here, your reading passages are a little more bigger, a little more longer than your single answer passages. Okay, so your single answer passages are quite short, quite small. It's easy to locate your answer. But for multiple choice, multiple answer, your reading passages are also a little more bigger. So here is where I tell you, if you get stuck, do not waste your time. Choose the third option. Okay, option C, that's it. So there's a high chance, especially for this question type. MC, multiple choice, multiple answer. It's a big probability that in your exam, it's going to be the third option, okay? So do not practice a lot of this at home. Don't waste your time practicing this question type at home because you already have a hack for it. Don't get stuck, choose a third option. But don't, don't waste your time. So when you're practicing, pay attention to your important question types. So these question types, don't, don't worry too much about them, okay? So don't waste your time practicing a lot of these question types. Practice it to understand how it is, but don't waste your time. So let's look at this uh, question and try to solve um, the, the, the passage here. According to the text, which of the following statements can be concluded about primary classes in the Turks and Caicos Islands? So according to the text, which of the following? So try and skim through the text if you are a fast reader here, but if you're not, look at the option and try and go match it. So which is which can be concluded? So uh, I think we for this, we have to skim through the text. Let's skim through. about the primary classes, right? So there's nothing about classes here. What about the next one? Next uh, paragraph. So is there anything from the primary uh, from this? So we see that multi-grade classes are mainly found in smaller schools or most primary pupils are in multi-grade classes. Yes, that could be our answer. Parents can choose to send their child to a multi-grade school. So primary and secondary school enrollment is virtually uh, universal. Uh, so what, what do you think is the answer maybe? Okay, if you look at the next one, there are a total of 10 government primary schools on the islands. So I think the third option is our answer. Most primary pupils are in multi-grade classes. That is correct. Uh, of these, seven are large enough. So government primary schools on the islands. Of these, seven are large enough to organize pupils into single grade classrooms. Pupils in these schools are generally grouped by age into mixed ability classes. Fourth option is the answer. Sorry, give me a minute. 
fourth op option is the answer as well as the third option is the answer okay so let's try and see uh, a few of these questions in our uh, in our practice website so this is a free website and uh, you can choose to practice from it so to navigate to this can you look at this option on the left which says home page click on it and then if you look at it on the right hand side on the top you've got all the four modules so since we're practicing reading we choose reading module then we choose multiple choice multiple answer because that's the question type that we're dealing with then we choose this option we try and answer this question so this is a small passage well and good so we read the option first i mean the question statement according to the article which of the following are true about this instant noodle business so we see our time here a minute and a half is all we can afford right so which of the following are true so pay attention to the first and last sentence in each passage instant noodles were laughed at they were a high craze six six times more than the fresh noodles now look at the answer mr andrews product are not well known outside japan this we is an it's the wrong answer so we eliminate it or we don't even look at it or we know this is the wrong answer then when instant noodles came onto the market they cost much less no they cost six times more so this cannot be our answer too what about the third one mr andrews business venture was successful with the public yes he had sold about 13 million bags and attracted certainly so this could be our answer that's plus one then mr andrew purchased the firm nissan for three billion dollars there's nothing about him purchasing nissan what about the next one option five mr andrew was initially concerned about having so many co competitors that it doesn't say anything about him being concerned people in the noodle business initially ridiculed mr andrew's ideas so they were laughed at by fresh noodle makers so the noodle makers fresh noodle makers they laughed at him ridicule means mocking making fun of laughing at so look at the answer that's two points towards reading okay so that's how we choose it we we solved it in less than two minutes let's do the next one so let's read the option what can you conclude from the passage so the answer is usually found in the first and last uh, sentences if it's asking about the conclusion or the summary of things okay so we skim through the passage the distribution of power resources in the contemporary information age varies greatly on different issues we are told that united states is the only superpower in a unipolar world but the situation is far more complex than the first meets the eye the agenda of world politics has become like a three dimensional chess game in which one can win only by playing vertically as well as horizontally so politics has become like this this is only the superpower with global military reach it makes sense to break in traditional term the distribution of power is multipolar okay so if you read the first statement he does not agree that the united states has world dominion except in military matters so it makes no sense to call this an unipolar world or an american empire so he does not agree that Uni united states has world dominion except in military matters maybe that's the answer he worries that uh important transnational issues won't be resolved because us isn't given the lead does he worry about that no i don't think that's the answer he thinks discussions of how power is distributed in the world ravi i think you should you can take time to solve this instead of me doing it all the time so you get practice as well so try and solve it and give an answer and we'll check if it's a right or not right or not doesn't matter even if it's wrong it's just practice
What do you think is the answer? So, uh, so it cannot, he does not believe that crucial issues in the world should be compared. This cannot be the answer. We eliminate this. He feels the United States as the richest country. So he doesn't believe this as well. Uh, so I think this is also not the answer. He thinks that discussions on how power is distributed in the world are frequently simplified. So I think uh, that is the answer, third option. And I also think first option is the answer. Okay, so that's how we solve it. We try and see what's making sense and we solve it. So I'll stop sharing my screen. We go look at other, uh, other types of question in the reading module or other question types as well in the reading module. So I'm stopping sharing my screen. I'm going to open up my PowerPoint again, okay? Okay, so, oh, before that, we didn't discuss the answer to that, right? So we selected first and the third one asked the answer. So if you look at it, that's the right answer. So he does not agree that the United States has world dominion. And then he thinks discussions of how power is attributed in the world are frequently overly simplified. So those two are the right answer. That's two points. But if you get stuck, please don't choose a wrong answer. Don't choose, uh, don't guess. Instead, simply choose a third option. Choose only one answer, okay? That's the third option. The reason is, if you choose another one which is wrong, you get negative marking. So because there's a high probability, there's chance that you will be getting the right answer there and you won't be getting your negative marking. So don't waste your time, okay? This is, these are time-consuming questions. See that you don't get lost. Don't lose track of time here. So let's look at the next important question types in our reading. So even though multiple choice questions give you points, they are not your important question types. They're the least of your problems. So your important question types are both your fill in the blanks and your reorder paragraph. So let's look at reorder paragraph before we start. So have you heard of this question type? Ravi, uh, about reorder paragraph. So what happens in this question type? You're given sentences from a passage. You have heard of it? Yes, okay. So you're given sentences from a passage like in, on your left-hand side. Your screen, on your screen, you're given sentences from a reading passage, which is taken randomly. It could be taken from any reading passage. Usually it's an academic passage taken from any journal, you know, any academic journal, they just grab passages. So sentences from a paragraph is given to you on the left-hand side. So like this, maybe we'll choose an easy one just to start with. So that I can explain to you properly as well. So let's look at something that's easier for me to explain, easy for you to understand. Um, so there's one that I usually use while explaining so that it's easy for students to understand. Um, Uh, okay, it's this passage that I usually use to explain uh, while I'm explaining reorder paragraph because I, this question type, I can explain all these approaches, all the strategies easily in one, one question type. So this is how your question is going to look like in your reorder paragraph. Statements or sentences from a passage it is given to you on your left-hand side. 
So these sentences, they are borrowed from one paragraph of a reading passage from some ac academic journal. Your job or your task is to arrange them in the right order. That's your task. That's your task requirement. So these sentences, they've given to you in the wrong order. You're supposed to arrange them in the right order. Now, how are you marked for this? Or what is the marking criteria for this? So I'll just explain how this is being marked. Let me open up my PowerPoint. So in your mark, the marking criteria is you get points for every pair that you make rather than the order. So for example, let me explain what I'm trying to tell you. How you're being marked is very important here. Please pay attention. So you're not marked for solving it. So your attitude while doing this question type is not to solve it, but to make correct pairs. So to understand it properly, uh, I'll just open up my notepad and I'll write it on that so that you can understand it well. Give me a minute. Um, I'll stop sharing now. I'll bring up my notepad. Okay, I hope you can see my notepad. So I'll just show you how you're being marked for this. Okay, so imagine you're given, this is your question statements, A, B, C, and D. This is your question statements, or maybe E as well. So if this is your question statement, A, B, C, D, E, these are your question statements and you're given it like this. Let me blow it up for you just to understand it better. Okay, increase the size of it. Uh, okay, I hope you can see this properly. Thing is I'm still getting used to the hang of Mac. Okay, if these are your question statements. You have sentence A, sentence B, sentence C, sentence D, sentence E. Okay, your job, and if this is in the wrong order, your job is to put them in the right order. Now imagine this is the correct answer. You've put it in the right order. This is your right answer. So this is the marking criteria that I'm talking for, uh, that I'm telling you about reorder paragraph. So marking criteria for... your reorder paragraph. So I'll write it as ROP for you to understand. So if this is the right answer, you put them in the order, if this is the right answer, you put A and B together. So sentence A and sentence B, if you put them together, you'll get one point. So they are considered to be one pair, one correct pair of sentences. So sentence A and sentence B are together. So you get a point for this, you get one point. Now B and C is considered to be a pair, you get another point for it. C and D is considered to be a pair, you get a point for it. D and E is considered to be a pair, you get a point for this. So this question, which has about one, two, three, four, five statements, you'll be marked four, or you'll be getting four answers if you pair them correctly. You're not marked for putting A in the first place, B in the second place, C in the, you're not marked for the position of the sentences but you're being marked for the right pairs that you can make or the number of correct pairs that you can make. That's how you're being marked. Is there any doubts with this? So we've got new, uh, another uh, student who's joined us. Uh, Priya, hello. Is this your first time, first class for PTE? Have you taken PTE before? Yeah, ma'am, one day I have taken. Okay, so we're just discussing PTE reading today and we're discussing uh, a question type called reorder paragraph. Are you familiar with this question type? Yeah, I have, I've seen the content. Okay, you've seen, uh, you've understood this type of question. Have you seen this type of questions? Try, tried doing them? No, ma'am, I haven't done. Okay, so this is one of your important question types for your reading. So I'm just telling you how you're being marked for this. So if you put in the right answer, 
you'll be getting four marks for the, for a question which is having five sentences. So you'll be getting four points for this. Now imagine if this is my answer, if this is my answer, if I'm answering in this way, please be patient. Okay. So if I'm answering it like this, so I put B, then I put, uh, or I'll show my answer here. Okay, if this is my answer, if I've answered like this, if I put B, then I put C, then I put um, E, then I put D, and then I put A. If this is the way I've answered this reorder paragraph question, if this is my answer, how am I marked? What do you think? Will B and C, C give me a point? Yes or no? So I look at the answer, B and C is one pair, one correct pair, I've put B and C together, okay? So I'll be getting one point here. Is this clear? So B and C in the right answer is one pair, one correct pair. So I paired them together, B and C together, I'll be getting one point for this pair. Now what about C and E? They don't make a pair. So C and E, I don't get anything, I get zero, okay? What about E and D? D, E and E, D. What do you think about this? Do I get a, do I get a point for that? If I put pair them up like that? Ravi, Priya, what do you think? If, if I pair up my answer like this, do I get a point? No, because it's not in sequence. For, so for this question type, even though D and E is a pair, I've put them together, but the sequence is different. I've put E first and D next. So I have swapped the sequence. So in other words, I put them ulta. So I'll get zero for this. I don't get any point for this. What about DNA? DNA is not my pair at all. So again, I get zero. But still, because I've put B and C together, I get one point for this question. Any doubts? Are you able to understand what I'm trying to say? So for this question, type, yeah, for this question type, there's something called partial credit. So your attitude or your mindset while solving this question type is this. You should not worry about solving it. So this should be your attitude. Don't solve it. Don't sit and solve it because it'll take all day because it's time consuming. So your attitude is make pairs. Okay, so you should try and make as many pairs as possible. So if you're looking at a score of seven, then your aim is to get at least one correct pair by the time you get out of your exam hall. Okay, so don't worry about finding the right solution or put them in the order, but your job is to make pairs for this question type. Okay, let me know if you get stuck or if you have a doubt here. All right, now let me stop uh, this and I'll share my uh, practice website with you. So the practice website that we're following is called Real PTE. Or oh, before that, uh, I'll show you the approaches. So there are different strategies all over the world, all over the place. There are so many different strategies for this question type. So many people have so many different strategies for this question, feel free to use them. So I'll be sharing a few of the strategies which I um, personally recommend, but if you've got your own, feel free to use them. So these, I won't call them as strategies. I won't call it as a step-by-step -step, uh, thing to solve your answers. Instead, I'll call them as approaches, or this is one way you can approach this question, okay? So I'll give you about five or six approaches for, to, to make pairs in this question type. So see, I'm not telling each question. Uh, so you'll have to use a combination of all these approaches to solve this question. I'll tell you what I'm trying to, I mean, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. So your approach one, your first approach is to skim through all the sentences quickly and try to identify what is your topic sentence. So this, the question that is given to you, the statements that's given to you on your left-hand side, go through it, skim through those questions and try to identify which among it is your topic sentence or what could be the topic sentence of that 
paragraph. So what is the characteristic of a topic sentence? So what, uh, how to identify a topic sentence? This is what a topic sentence is going to look like. First of all, the topic sentence is going to be independent or it's devoid of uh, depending on any other sentence and the answers its own questions that means uh, it does it will not have all you know pronouns or if, if it says this um, uh, table you will ask what table which table right so it, it answers its own question so it says a table is made out of wood it's a statement like that where it answers its own question it's not dependent on any other statement to complete its information it does not in, begin with a pronoun. So these statements, though the topic statements usually don't begin with a pronoun. Pronouns are he, she, it, that, they. So there are relative pronouns. There are uh, pronouns, personal pronouns. So it doesn't belong, uh, I mean, doesn't start with a pronoun. And this statement will not start with a linking word. Okay, so it doesn't start with a conjunction, doesn't start with however, because. Have you ever started a statement with because? you do sometimes but but be careful but the, the statements or these topics will not start with a linking word or with conjunction so uh, that's how you recognize a topic sentence having said that sometimes these sentences are taken from the middle of a passage they just take it from the middle of a passage and they put it in in such cases uh, all this becomes null okay your topic will start from anywhere but in your exam when you're practicing it, uh, you might come across different types of uh, reorder paragraphs, which are crazy. But in your exam, you will have a defined or when you in your in the sentences or the questions in your exam will definitely begin with a topic sentence. You can recognize a topic sentence and it will also have a concluding statement. So let's start uh, trying. OK, if you look at this passage or if you look at this question, can you guys skim through this question? and try to identify of these, what could be your topic sentence. So what do you think could be the topic sentence of this? So the second sentence, Ravi, could, uh, it could be the topic sentence. So if you read through, this diet is not only unattractive, but may cause nutritional imbalance. Okay. This diet, you'll ask the question, which diet, right? So this is a demonstrative pronoun. So this cannot be our uh, uh, topic sentence. What about the second one? Vegetarians do not eat meat or fish in their diet. Vegetarians do not eat meat or fish in their diet. This could be our topic sentence because it's answering its own question. Look at the next one. Menus in all of these places. So you'll ask the question, all of what places, which places? So this may not be our topic sentence because it's got a pronoun here. So this need not be our topic statement. You look at the next one. Restaurants and school cafeteria adjust and amend their menus to adapt to this special diet. So you ask which special diet? So it does, again, doesn't answer your question. These developments, you again ask the question, what developments, right? So the only thing, only statement that looks like your independent statement, that which answers its own question is this. Vegetarians do not eat meat or fish in their diet. Now uh, let's look at the second approach to solving this question. Look at the second approach to solve this question type. See, our goal is to make pairs. How many, uh, we, we, our job is to find as many pairs as we can. So how do we find a pair for this question? How do we try to find a pair for this question? So first question, first way to find a pair is a noun and a pronoun combination. So I'll just show you using my notepad. Oh my gosh, okay, I found it. So. If you look at this, I'll just show you what I mean by uh, the first approach or to make pairs. Um, use your noun and a pronoun combination. So, guys, if you can mute yourselves if you're uh, okay. So, a noun and a pronoun combination, noun plus pronoun combination. This is one way to make pairs. 
So what I mean by noun and pronoun combination is combination. Okay. So go through your um, sentences, question sentences, and identify a pronoun. So what could be your pronoun? Your pronoun can be personal pronouns like um, personal pronouns like he, she, I. So it could be personal pronouns like this. And then you go looking for it or you could find personal pronouns or it could be demonstrative pronouns like uh, this, these, okay? Uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, that. So these are all demonstrative pronouns. Are you guys able to understand? So what is a pronoun before that? What is a pronoun? Pronoun is a word. Used instead of a noun. So this is a pronoun. Suppose I'm talking about John. If I say John wakes up in the morning, then I say John goes for a walk. Then I say John returns from his work. Then I say John eats his brekkie or breakfast. Then if I say John um, goes to work, John then goes to work. Now, Instead of, what is my noun here? Or who is my noun? Noun is John. So instead of keeping on using John, John, John for every sentence, what is a word that I use instead of John? I you might use a word called he, right? So he is the pronoun for John. So pronoun is a word used instead of a noun. You're not able to see the notepad? No? So this is, are you able to see it now? Okay, so this is what I was trying to tell you. I was writing this down in my notepad. So I was typing it, I didn't know you were not able to see it. I'm sorry, I thought I was sharing my screen. So this is what is a pronoun and a noun. So this is a noun and pronoun combination. So in your statement, you identify a pronoun. It could be that. So if I say, uh, if I tell the, the cup which I am holding in my hand, or if I say the pen that I am writing with, okay? So that which, all that, acts as a pronoun. So they are called demonstrative pronouns. So spot a pronoun in your statement, go looking for its noun and you pair them up together. So you, these are personal pronouns. There are demonstrative pronouns like these, that, those, which. Okay, all these are your pronouns as well. So what you have to do is identify a pronoun, okay? And then go looking for its noun or look for its noun identify its appropriate noun. And pair those sentences together. Okay, so how do you pair it? You put the noun first and then you put the pronoun statement. Okay, any doubts with this? So you put your noun sentence first and then you put your pronoun sentence. This is how you pair them together, noun and a pronoun combination. Any doubts with this? So you make one pair using your noun and your pronoun, okay? So this is one approach or one way to get your, no doubts, okay. So this is one way to make pairs. So if you look at your uh, practice question or this example question, so if you see this diet, 
So this diet is talking about this vegetarian diet. You put them together, okay? Or you pair them together. So vegetarian and this diet, they go together. So you get one pair. Then menu in all of these places. This is a pronoun. So these means more than one place. So go looking for it. This is the noun. Restaurants and school cafeteria. So the noun sentence goes first, followed by the pronoun sentence. And then these, again, followed by the pronoun sentence. Okay, so that's how we pair them together. That's one approach to pair your reorder paragraph together. Now, the next approach is to use full forms and short forms. So if a sentence contains full forms and then it contains short forms, then the full form statement comes first and only then the short form statement comes. Then another way to pair them together or to pair these sentences or to find pairs is to look out for chronology. Chronology is also a very good way to pair them up together. So chronology or a sequence of events, something happens in the morning, then something follows, something follows. So sequence of events or chronology is also a way to make pairs. Another way to make pairs is to uh, take note of general to specific progression. So this is a very effective way. This is one way that I usually use. So noun pronoun is a big effective way. The other one is this. This is my personal favorite, general to progression, uh, specific progression. So what I mean by that, that is, you're given a general statement first, then they give you a, a statement that's giving you specific information. For example, they might give you a general statement like soup, tea, and um, water are hydrating fluids. Okay, then they might talk to you. Uh, among these, water is the most uh, hydrating fluid of all, or water is one of the most popular fluids of all. And then the next statement would be distilled water is the purest form of water, or is the purest form of water. So there'll be a general statement that's talking to you about something, and then it progresses, it narrows down, gives you specific information, and then it narrows it further down and gives you even more specific information, okay? So make note of this. This is a very, very um, um, effective way to make pairs, okay? Then definite and indefinite articles. I'll explain more about it. Then subject, verb, and object. See, I don't, uh, even though I tell you this as one of your uh, approaches, the fourth one, which is a subject, verb, and object, where the subject of the first, uh, the second statement is actually the object of the first sentence or the object of the first sentence becomes the subject of the next. I don't um, vouch too much for this because it's not always the case. So, but definite and indefinite articles, yes, I will explain that as we move on further. Then um, only after completing one topic will the next topic start. Then a new introduction to a new topic will only be following the come after the completion of the first topic. And if a statement is telling, for example, and they introduce a topic, that will be uh, the, 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 the leading of the pair. That will be the reading, leading statement of the pair. So if they say, for example, mobile phone, and then there is another statement about mobile phone, and you pair them up together, the sentence that starts with, for example, that could be your topic, or that could be the leading sentence in that pair. I don't know if I'm being clear enough for you, but I'll explain that uh, once again. So what is another approach? General to specific progression, right? So here it says, vegetarians do not eat meat or fish in their diet. And this is a pronoun which says, this diet is not only. So it talks about diet over here. So it's talking about uh, what, are those, uh, what are the information they're giving here? Vegetarians, meat, fish, and diet. There are many things that is mentioned here. Then it gives you specific information about diet. It doesn't talk about meat or fish, it talks about the diet here. So it's giving you specific information about the diet, that the diet is not only unattractive, but it is also causing nutritional imbalance. So it gives you a general statement, gives you a statement that gives you a lot of information about it, okay? Then they're talking about restaurants, school cafeterias, and then diet, and then it talks only about the menus here. So it, there's a mention, or this a general statement which is mentioning about restaurants and school cafeteria and menus and special diet, 
and this statement is giving you specific information about the menus in all of these places okay that's what i meant by general to specific progression so this is an important question type and please use this website to practice it so i will uh, if you if you've got any doubts please put it in the chat and i'll answer to it if not i'll start uh, uh, introducing you to the remaining question types in your reading um, module do you have a doubt with this all good okay so let's look at uh, the remainder question types in this module so we have two very 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 important question types so this is how your priority should be for each of these question i'll just put it in your chat so your first priority should be this one um, first priority should be uh, fill in the blanks reading and writing or drop down fill in the blanks so this is your first priority okay your second priority should be fill in the blanks reading your next priority should be your reorder paragraph then your mcqs okay this is your priority this is how you should give importance while practicing so your next question type that i'm going to discuss uh, are your fill in the blanks questions So Ravi, so far, uh, have you taken any classes or you just take, uh, you know, study with the help of your friend or you look at YouTube and study? Is that how you do it or? So far, how have you been practicing? What is your source of study? Oh, you've not, you've not taken classes. So how do you learn? How have you been practicing? Because you're quite familiar with all the uh, question types. So how do you keep practicing it? Okay, you're just starting. Uh, all right. Okay. If you, okay. So I'll share my screen for uh, um, the other types of or the remainder question types in this passage. So Ravi, uh, do you find this, this class to be um, of use to you or do you find it difficult to follow? Do you, have, do you feel it's a lot of information? Just for me to have a feedback so that I can do it better the next time. I'll take your suggestion so that uh, the other classes could be better too. All right. Okay, it's easy for you to understand. Good. Okay, that's all I want. I want whoever is here to, to understand it clearly. That's all. Okay, we'll go for reading fill in the blanks. So like the, this blank is also called drag and drop. So this is a question type in your reading. We have two types of fill in the blanks. Reading fill in the blanks, reading and writing fill in the blanks. These reading fill in the blanks are also called drag and drop fill in the blanks. So they give points only towards reading. It doesn't transfer any other, uh, it doesn't transfer any points to any other module, okay? So two types of blanks, reading fill in the blanks and reading and writing fill in the blanks, okay? Before that, for your reorder paragraph, so I told you for your multiple choice questions, you'll be spending a minute and a half, right? Nothing more than a one and a half minutes. And for your reorder paragraph, you'll be spending only two minutes per question. Two minutes per questions for your reorder paragraph. And for your fill in the blanks, both your fill in the blanks, you'll be spending only three minutes per question. Only then you'll be able to cover all of this in in your 34 to 41 minutes okay so what is reading fill in the blanks and reading and writing fill in the blanks let me share my powerpoint once again it's all gone somewhere Okay, 
So in your reading, for your reading, fill in the blanks, you'll be having a reading passage and this passage is going to contain blanks. So you're given a reading passage with blanks in between. So you, and you're given options to choose from. You have to fill in those blanks with the right word. So the options of all those blanks are given to you down below. So you'll have all the options there. You have to choose from the options and drop it into the right blank. That's your job here. This is a very important question type for your reading. You'll be uh, getting about 25 to 30 points towards your reading from this question type. So you'll be spending about three minutes maximum. The number of options will be double the number of blanks. So usually it's double, sometimes it's more than double. So if you have got four blanks, usually the answer is going to be like, you'll have eight options to choose from, okay? So what is the strategy for this reading, fill in the blanks? Read your passage, skim through the passage. While reading it, find what kind of word or what part of word. Try to read that loudly so that you understand what form of the word could be fit into that blank. For example, if you're reading, uh, it was dash in the morning. So it was, uh, it could be dash in the morning, hence the road was flooded. So it could be it was raining or it was um, uh, drizzling or it was snowing or some word like that. So when you predict it, you know, okay, this word is going to be in the ing form. And then you choose the word which is in the ing form. So when I say predict, I'm not just telling, try to understand the context and predict the word itself, but rather you'll understand what form of word I'm looking at, whether I'm looking at a word in the ing form, if I'm looking at a word in the ed form. So that'll help you to predict. That'll help you to choose the answer. Are you able to understand what I'm trying to say? So that is one strategy. That method is called prediction. Okay, so where you predict the type of answer. Okay, so that's a very good method. I know it sounds easy. It sounds like you already know about it, but it's a very effective way. Okay, many times students forget to use this method, but this is a very effective method to choose your answer. So the next uh, question type is called fill in the blanks reading and writing. Here, what happens, you're given a reading passage and here also you're given options. But the options are given, uh, every blank has a drop down arrow, which I will show you. And you have to choose your options from there. Same strategy for both. Use a method called elimination and prediction. So let's solve a few. I'll explain it as we solve it, okay? So these are called fill in the blanks, reading and writing, reading and writing, fill in the blanks. So you've got options for all of these at every blank. If you can see every blank contains options. So skim through this passage and try to solve it. While solving this, of these options, right, there are four options usually. At least two of them are going to be nonsense options. So they, they're not going to make any kind of sense. So the first method that you can use is called um, elimination, where you eliminate your wrong answers or you eliminate your nonsense options. So let me look at, uh, let me share. Uh, so that's one method. If you want, I'll just write it down so that you you can understand it better. So for your fill in the blanks. Reading and writing. So this is also called drop down fill in the blanks. So use something called elimination where you eliminate the nonsense option from the drop down arrow or from the drop down sorry okay so you eliminate the nonsense option or you select the nonsense option and you don't consider it okay that's one way second method is called prediction which we just discussed second method is called prediction this is also a good method where you predict the form of word, you understand the context. So you understand the context and you predict what the word might be.
what the word could be and try to predict its synonym. So you will understand the synonym or predict its synonym, okay? This is also one way to get it done. So let's solve a few of it. Oh, you didn't, can't see the screen, is it? Sorry. Can you see it now? So this is what I was talking about. So these are the two things that you can understand the context of the passage and you will, okay. So two methods, elimination and prediction. So in elimination, you eliminate the nonsense options and then for prediction, you understand the context and predict the word. So let's try and solve a few. And after that, I'll explain a few grammar rules which might help you in your blanks. Okay, so if this is your uh, uh, fill in the blanks reading and writing, see again, I'll tell you there's no strategy or there's no shortcut for reading, okay? But your speaking, listening and writing all has shortcuts for all, everything has strategies. But for your reading, you really need to use your head. So I'll give you approaches. I'll show you how to approach this, how to get as, as many right answers as possible, but there's no shortcuts, okay? So let's read and let's try to understand this. Many tests have shown that in a very broad way, people in most parts of the world have similar color preferences. So what do you understand here? People in most parts of the word, world, they have similar color preferences or they tend to like the same colors. Blue is the most preferred and popular hue. What a coincidence. So what are the odds? Blue is my favorite color too. So blue is the most preferred color. So most of them like blue color and it's a very popular hue. And then it is followed by, in order, by red, green, purple, yellow, and orange. So this is how people like colors. So the blue is the most popular one, followed by red, green, purple, yellow, and orange. So in your exam, you see a blank after the full stop. Then the word in the blank will start with a capital letter. So in your practice websites, it might not be the case. But in your exam, the word here will start with a capital letter. So if you've got one word with capital and all the other words starting with small, don't even think, choose the word which starts with a capital letter, okay? Then dash this basic order of color preference, however, are the responses of individuals. So if you look at it, similarity this, no, it cannot be the answer, right? So it should be something in the, uh, you're looking at a verb here, okay? So it can't be similarity because that's a noun, then however, this basic order it cannot be because the sentence already contains however. So we have one nonsense option similarity to second nonsense option however. So we have two answers left. Either it is nevertheless or overlaying. Look at it. Nevertheless, this basic order of color preference however can't be the answer. So the only sensible option is overlaying. That means taking an overview or looking at it from the top, this basic order of color uh, preference are the responses of individuals, which of course vary dash. So there's something called collocations, which is helpful for your blanks. So first thing uh, you saw is elimination method. Then you saw uh, a word after uh, full stop will start with capital. The second thing, okay, so elimination, then you saw prediction, then word after full stop is cap, it starts with capital. You saw this. Then the fourth thing that you should understand is what do we see now? Um, what's the uh, thing that we understood from here? So, uh, uh, so then there's something called collocations. If you see this word vary, so what are the words used next to vary? So you see very slightly, very widely, these are called collocations. So collocations are words which are used together. We don't know for what reason, but they're always used together. So this is also one thing to understand for your blanks, collocations. So collocations, they are words which are used together for 
uh, together always. So if I give you, for example, to explain collocations, if I give you a word like, for example, if I give you a word like academic, okay? If I give you a word which says academic, what could be a collocation for academic? You could, you could use words like academic, journal, academic, qualification, academic, um, degree, academic, um, year, academic, um, resources or academic materials and things like this. So they are words that are commonly used with each other. So beware of your collocations. They also come in handy when you're solving your fill in the blank. So these are the tools useful for your fill in the blank. So these could be tools um, to help with fill in the blanks. Okay, so this is also uh, one important thing. So collocation is important for you. What else could be another important um, way to uh, attempt this? Okay, let's solve it. While we solve it, I'll explain to you further. So understand the context, try to eliminate the nonsense options, try to understand the context. So when you see this word wary, what's a collocation? It can't be wary absolutely, very definitely. These are nonsense options because collocation is varying widely or varying slightly. So let's try to read further and try and understand, which of course very dash and may also be very powerful. So they are responses of individuals from many places which vary widely. So the, the color preferences vary widely. Children are likely to have strong dash for some colors and aversions to others. So children are likely to have strong preferences because of this word aversion. So either they like, of, uh, they, they strongly like colors or they strongly hate some colors. So that's what it says. Then uh, to others, then we continue to read, but sometimes we'll not admit to them since outside dash may be influential in determining both color preferences and the way they are expressed or suppressed. So since outside factors may be influential in determining both color preferences and the way they're expressed or suppressed. Current fashions in clothes and accessories, gender stereotyping and peer pressure, uh, a peer group pressure may all play a significant part. Boys in particular may be reluctant to admit to any strong preferences for colors, dash those of favorite football, football teams. So other than those or rather than those of favorite football teams. So we understand that boys are reluctant or they uh, think twice before expressing their favorite colors um, other than telling about their favorite football team jerseys or something like that. So we look at our answer. That's one, two, three, four, five blanks. So that's five points to reading, five points to writing. That's equal transferable for these uh, blanks. So it's a very important question type. The points are equally transferred between your reading and writing. Okay. So uh take a screenshot of this if you want because this will help you to think or approach it in a certain way let me so take a, a take a screenshot of this if you wish because this is going to help you so the tools to help with your fill in the blanks or tools to aid your fill in the blanks the elimination method the prediction method and all these, okay? So these are the tools that you can use. Clear? Any doubts? Okay, so let's look at the um, last question type, which is your reading fill in the blanks. So the same thing, okay? Uh, so what happens in this question type? Your reading fill in the blanks are also called your drag and drop fill in the blanks. So for this question type, it's the same approach, but here try and use predictions to understand what is the form of word that you're looking for and things like that. So for example, 
Okay, let me just explain this. So for example, if you're looking at this, you see that there are four options, four blanks here, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options. So like I told you, the number of options are double the number of blanks. So uh, to keep your focus, I suggest that you read this loudly. So green spaces contribute to a dash of soil and aerial temperatures during spells of hot weather. So whenever there's a blank after A, you what do you understand if there's a blank after A? What do you think of those blanks? So if there is a blank after A, give, give me a minute. So if there is a blank after A, then you understand that the word in the blank, in the blank or the word uh, should be a noun. It's always a noun, it will always be a noun and it starts with a consonant sound. Okay, similarly, a blank after an, the word is a noun again, and then it starts with a vowel sound. Okay, and then if it's a blank after the, The word is going to be a noun again. Okay, so after the articles, a, an, and the, whatever the blank, the word in the blank is always going to be a noun. So, or it could be an adjective, but usually it's going to be a noun. So the green spaces contribute significantly to a dash of soil and aerial temperature during spells of hot weather so there are green spaces, they're good things, right? So it's a positive tone, they're talking about good things. So green spaces, they're contributing significantly to a dash of soil and aerial temperature during spells of hot weather. So what are, our, what are our nouns here? Low cannot be our noun, high cannot be a noun. Both of them are adjective, adjective. To a differ, no, this is a verb. To a context, maybe. Addition is a noun or reduction. T-I-O-N, words ending with T-I-O-N are usually your nouns, right? Focus is also a noun, revenue is a noun. So here, because it's talking about temperature, it's either contribute to a high, high, no, it cannot be, either to an addition of temperature or a reduction of temperature. So for now, if we can't decide it, we'll leave it like that, continue to read the next one. In the garden dash, there is, however, little information as to what extent. So in the garden, what? In the garden, context or in the garden uh, situation. There is, however, little information as to what extent various types of plants dash in their cooling potential. So it's differ or vary, how different types of plants vary in their cooling potential and how certain planting combinations may maximize cooling under a scenario of dash rainfall and minimal water input. So if there is this conjunction and, it's joining two ideas. So minimal water input, so something to do with low rainfall because of this conjunction and, and is always joining similar ideas. So I won't say Ravi is a clever, but uh, a clever and a lazy boy. So if I say clever, I'll put something and, then I put something positive as well, right? I won't say clever and a lazy boy. I'd say clever, but, so that's a contrast when I use but, but when I use the conjunction and, then I'm joining similar ideas, right? So uh, cooling under a scenario of low rainfall and minimal water inputs. So what is this significantly to a addition? No, it can't be addition. So it's reduction because it's a good thing, these green spaces. So they help in reducing the temperature during these hot weather spells. And that's contributing to uh, uh, human well-being. So they're contributing to well-being, so there's reduction of temperature. So those are our five reading question types. It's not enough that you attend two hours of class and then go back, but you will need to practice a lot to help you score your desired score. 
So we uh, have these classes every day from uh, 10, uh, I'm sorry, 11 to 1 uh, Sydney time. And we've got IELTS classes every day from 2 to 4. So uh, take advantage of these lessons and see you again uh, with, another, uh, with another lesson. Thank you and have a good day.